Hello everyone. Today we are going to see <coughs> the first unit, machine tools and their applications. In this, we are going to see the drilling machine. In drilling machine, we are going to see the types of drills, operations, twist drill geometry, types of drilling machine, tool holder. Next, milling machine. In that, we are going to see the types of milling machine, cutter types geometry and their applications universal dividing head methods of indexing simple compound differential numericals which are based on the indexing <coughs> and the calculation of machining time for drilling and milling processes then broaching machine introduction to broaching broach tool geometry types of broaching machines and operations and last that is planar and boring machines their introductions and types now first we are going to see the classification of manufacturing processes so the main classifications are primary shipping process deforming process machining process joining processes surface finishing processes material properties modification processes in primary shipping processes there are again sub classification that is casting powder metallurgy plastic processing and in deforming processes there are further sub classifications that is forging rolling sheet metal working extrusion in machining processes the classifications are turning drilling milling shaping rimming in joining processes the classifications are welding soldering brazing screwing riveting adhesive bonding and in surface finishing processes are honing lapping buffing plating coating grinding will be performed and in material properties modification processes there are hot working processes, cold working processes, heat treatment processes, and short pinning processes. Now, <coughs> we are going to see the next that is drilling. So, producing a cylindrical hole, producing a cylindrical hole by removing material by rotating edge of cutting tool called a drill so in figure you can see the drill bit is there okay this drill bit is rotates about its axis and meanwhile it pushes to the downward direction so that what it does it removes the material from that place okay <clears throat> now next we will see the geometry of twist drill so here you can see the drill body is there okay a twist drill is made up of three components first shank second body third drill point okay so next we'll see the nomenclature of drill cutting diameter so largest diameter measured across the top of the lands behind the point is called as the cutting diameter back taper is called as the diameter reduces slightly towards the shank end of the drill this is known as back taper and back taper provides clearance between the drill and the workpiece preventing friction and heat now next that is fluid length the length of fluid measured from the drill point to the end of the fluid runout. Fluid length determines the maximum depth of drilling. Okay, so this fluid length determines the depth of drilling. Now, next that is fluid construction. You can see there are three construction parabolic, conventional, and chip breaker next land land is the part of the drill body between the 
plutes the lines provide the drill with much of its torsional strength reducing the length land width increases chip space but reduces the strength now next waves the thickness measured across the base of the flutes is called as the waves it contributes to the torsional strength of the tree okay now next helix angle an angle formed between a line drawn parallel to the axis of the drill and the edge of the land is called as a helix angle so you can see the helix angle high helix angle regular and slow helix angle now here you can see further how does changing the helix angle affect the performance fast spiral drills provides greater lifting power for chips but are weaker and generally used in deep holes and slow spiral holes these are stronger but have less lifting power of chips and generally limited to shallow holes now next nomenclature that is margins the cylindrical portion of the land that is not cut away to provide clearance the balance of the land is reduced in diameter known as clear diameter or body clearance this body clearance prevents excessive rubbing and friction friction so points point is one of the nomenclature of the drill the drill points has four main point four main features point angle cutting lips chisel edge leaf relief so here we can see the drill point angles this first uses for general purposes second for chamfer to reduce the burr third is helical point for self centering and next 90 degree this is for soft and ductile material and this point angle is for split that reduces thrust and self centering uses in nc machine and this uses where high alloy steel is there now let us see further about point angles so high point angle that is flatter point recommend for harder and tougher stronger cutting edges shorter cutting lip produces a narrower chip point angle greater than 130 degree are generally used in materials that have been hardened or are extremely tough so shorter flatter cutting lips produces narrow chips you can see the narrow chips okay now the lower point angle so this is this is hang a sharper point and this is for a soft material and points sharper than 180 degree 118 degree 118 degree are generally used for soft non-ferrous materials and non-metallic so lower cutting leaves produces wider chips okay now next nomenclature that is cutting leaves cutting edges that extend from the center of the drill to the outer diameter is called as a cutting leaves on most standard drills the cutting edge should form a straight line some specialty and high performance drills have curved cutting leaves now let us see next the elements of drill points leaf relief angle it varies with the diameter of the drill and hardness of the material on larger diameters and drills for harder materials leaf relief is decreased to as low as 8 degree drills for soft materials and small diameters have high relief angles up to 24 degree leaf relief angles are measured across the margin width now next nomenclature that is chisel edge the edge at the end of the wave that connects the cutting leaves the chisel edge does not cut it penetrates displacing the workpiece material the chisel edge consumes 60 percent to 70 percent of the thrust required now next 
चीज एज एंगल द एंगल फॉर्म्ड बिटवीन द चीज एज एंड द कटिंग लिप्स आर द चीज एज एंगल एंड दिस इज जनरली वन ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री टू वन थर्टी फाइव डिग्री इट इज एन इंडिकेशन ऑफ लिप रिलीफ एंगल नाउ नेक्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू सी द ड्रिलिंग मशीन so drilling is an operation through which holes are produced in a solid material using a revolving tool the machine tool used for this purpose is called as drilling machine in drilling operation the workpiece is clamped firmly on the work table by using nuts and bolts the drill is press fitted in a drill chuck The rotating drill is made of harder material than that of workpiece and it is fed against the stationary workpiece by either hand or power feed. During this process, the material is removed in the form of chips. It is important to note that during the process, high amount of heat is generated, hence continuous supply of coolant is required. In a drilling machine, holes are produced quickly and at low cost so let us see the basic elements of drilling machine so you can see the basic elements first base base it is a part of machine which supports the entire structure generally base is made from the casting column it is the vertical member of machine which support the table and head containing all the driving mechanisms it may be of round section or box section third element work table it is mounted on the column it may be round or rectangular in shape it is used for clamping the workpiece directly over the face and provided with T slots. It has vertical as well as swing or circular motion. Drill head. Drill head carries driving and feeding mechanism from the spindle. The driving mechanism is used for driving the uh, drill, drill spindle, which consists of an electric motor, gear box, etc. Whereas feeding mechanism is used for feeding the drill into the workpiece spindle drive spindle is hollow part in which drill is inserted during the operation spindle rotates as well as moves up and down hence the drill also rotate as well as moves up and down so this is how the different elements works in the drilling machine now we are going to see the types of drilling machine first is portable drilling machine second sensitive or bench drilling machine third upright drilling machine fourth radial drilling machine fifth gang drilling machine sixth multi spindle drilling machine seventh deep hole drilling machine eight automatic drilling machine so here you can see portable drilling machine this is bench drilling machine this is upright drilling machine this is radial drilling machine this is normally universal means at most of the places this radial drilling machine uses now we are going to see the drilling machine operations so these are the operations which are performed on drilling machine that is drilling reaming boring counter boring counter sinking spot piecing taping and tripping so let us see <coughs> first drilling so drilling is the operation of producing circular hole in a solid metal by using a revolving tool which is called as drill before drilling the center of the hole is located on the workpiece by drawing two lines at right angle to each other and center punch is used to produce an indentation at the center so in such a way drilling is performed 
rimming it is the process of finishing already drilled holes this operation is performed by using a multi tooth tool called as a rimmer rimmer cannot produce a hole it only follows the path which has been previously drilled and removes a small amount of material boring it is the process of enlarging already drilled hole by using an adjustable cutting tool which is called as a boring tool this operation is used for finishing a drilled hole accurately and bring it to the required size as well as to correct the roundness of a hole boring tool has only one cutting edge next counter boring this operation is used for enlarging only limited portion of a hole and called as counter boring this tool used for the purpose is called as a counter bore counter sinking it is used for enlarging the end of a hole and to give it a conical shape for a short distance the tool used in this operation is called as counter sunk these tools have included angles of 60 degree 82 degree and 90 degree next option that is spot facing it is the operation of smooth smoothing and squaring the surface around a hole for the seat of a nut or head of the screw the hole may be spot faced below or above the rough surface tapping tapping is an operation of cutting internal threads by using a cutting tool called as a tap for tapping purpose the machine should be equipped with a reversible motor or some other reversing mechanism a tap in feed to a direct already drilled hole along the axial direction to produce internal threads tapping when large diameter holes are required in sheet metal then tapping operation is carried out it is carried out by using a tapping tool a small hole to suit the pilot is drilled at the center of the required position the adjustable arm is extended so that the edge of the high speed steel cutting tool produces the required hole size now next we will see the tool holders tool holders as you can see spindle sleeves it has more taper 1 as to 20 rotation due to friction between taper surface and spindle positive drive tongue fits in slot at the end of taper hole and the removal of drill is by placing of drift in slotted hole of a spindle so here you can see the different component of the tool holder one more here it is their tool holder socket if taper tool shank is larger than spindle taper then this tool uses solid shank attached to an end of cylindrical body body of socket has tapered hole larger than drill spindle drill spindle taper into which taper shank of tool fits okay so here you can see the most taper sleeve here drill tang is there taper shank this is machine spindle further you can see again the two holder now next we are going to see the milling machine so milling is a cutting process that uses a multi edge cutting tool to remove material while traveling along various axes with respect to the workpiece able to generate 
complex shapes and profiles so next that is slab milling process slab milling or it called as a peripheral milling it is a process where axis of cutting tool is parallel to the workpiece surface to be machined it used to create flat surface or slots and cutter may have either straight or helical teeth now next that is up milling process this is also called as a conventional process in this direction of travel of workpiece and direction of cutter they are opposite okay cutter is rotated against the direction of travel of workpiece so thickness of sheaf is there it is minimum at start and maximum at the end this is what the up milling process and next that is down milling process it is also called as a climb process climb milling process also in this cutter rotates in the same direction as that of travel of workpiece in this thickness of chief is maximum at start and reduces when cut terminates cutter bites the workpiece without sliding at start cutting force is variable throughout cut direction of cutting force tends to seat the work firmly in work holding device chief disposal does not interfere cutting and coolant application is direct at the cutting zone so you will get the improved surface finish next that is face milling so it is a process where the cutter is mounted having an axis of rotation perpendicular to the workpiece surface it used to create flat surfaces and the cutting action may be both up or down milling it leaves cutting marks on the machined surface flat surface as we know it is perpendicular to axis of rotation of cutter and whatever the teeth is there it is on periphery and face not extending up to the center actual cutting is done by peripheral teeth teeth on fa uh, face finishes by removal very small material and the application of milling process are flat surface in vertical horizontal and inclined place making slots or ribs of various sections slitting or parting often producing surfaces of revolution making helical grooves like fluids of the drills long thread milling on large lead screws power screws worms etc and short thread milling for small size fastening screws bolts etc it also uses for 2d contouring like cam profiles clutches etc and 3d contouring like die or mold cavities it also uses to cutting teeth in piece or batch production of spur gears straight to the wl gears worm wheels sprockets clutches etc and last that it by producing some silent features like grooves loads and profiles in various cutting tools for example drills taps reamers hobs gear shaping cutters these are the applications of the milling processes so milling cutter but before that we will see the brief information regarding milling cutter milling cutters are cutting tools typically used in milling machines or machining centers and occasionally in other it is called as machine tools they remove material by their movement within the machine or directly from the cutter's shape a variety of grooves slots and pockets in the workpiece may be produced from a variety of tool bits a common tool bit types are square end cutters ball end cutters t slot cutters 
and shale mills. Square and cutters can mill square slot pockets and edges. Ball and cutters mill radius dot slots or fillets. T slot cutters mill exactly that T shaped slots. Shale and cutters are used for large flat surfaces and for angle cuts. These are variations of these tool types as well. There are four critical angles of each cutting tool. End cutting edge angle, axial relief angle, radial relief angle and radial rake angle. Depending on the material being milled and what task should be performed, different tool types and geometry may be used. For instance, when a milling when milling a material like aluminium it may be advantageous to use a tool with very deep polished fluids and a very sharp cutting edge when machining a tough material such as stainless steel however shallow fluids and the square of cutting edge will optimize material removal and tool life a wide variety of materials are used to produce the cutting tools. Carbide inserts are the most common because they are good for high production milling. High speed steel is commonly used when a special tool shape is needed, not usually used for high production processes. Ceramic inserts are typically used in high speed machining with high production. Diamond inserts are typically used on products that require tight tolerances typically consisting of high surface qualities that is in non ferrous or non metallic materials. In the early 1990s use of coatings to reduce wear and friction became more common so most of the coatings are referred to by their chemical component composition such as tin tin has a basic yellowish coating and that has fallen out of wide use okay so advances in individual coatings are being made however with coatings such as amorphous diamond and nano composite pvd coatings beginning to be seen at high end shops now let us see the types of milling cutter so arbor type of milling cutter in that there are plain milling side milling form milling fly cutter and second main classification that is shank type of milling cutter having end mill inserted to t slot and fly cutter so in plain milling this ones are widely used and cylinder or high speed steel with tool teeth on periphery it used to produce flat surfaces it has several types that is light duty light duty helical heavy duty high helix now next that is side milling comparatively narrow cylindrical milling cutters with teeth on each side and on periphery it is used for cutting slots and for face and straddle milling operations free cutting action at high speeds and feeds it is, uh, it is suited for milling deep and narrow slots. Now next that is form milling. So it inc incorporates exact shape of part to be produced. It is useful for production of small parts. Each tooth in identical in shape and it is sharpened by grinding tooth face. And it is important to maintain original trick but these are difficult to be sharpened so such type of formed cutters are there concave shape convex shape and gear tooth okay so next that is angular cutter these teeth neither parallel nor perpendicular to cutting axis it is used for milling angular surfaces for grooves serrations chamfers and rimmer teeth these are divided into two group that is single angle milling cutters and double angle milling cutters so this is called as single angle milling cutters teeth on angular surface may or may not have teeth on 
flat and the its angle is 45 degree to 60 degree and next that is second group that is double angle milling cutter two intersecting angular surfaces with cutting edge on both equal angles on both sides of the line at right angle to axis now next that is fly cutter single pointed it is a single pointed cutting tool with cutting end ground to desired shape mounted in special adapter or arbor fine feed must be used it is used in experimental work instead of a specially sharped cutter end mill cutting teeth on end as well as periphery and it is fitted to spindle wise suitable adapter and the end mill has two types solid end mill shank and cutter integral where smaller with either straight or helical fluids and another has two fluids or four fluids and second type is shell end mill with separate shank now next that is inserted tooth only such cutters are made from a single piece of tool steel have seen so far considered in large cutters however the cost of the steel becomes an important item and there is the ever present danger of losing a large amount of labor so courtesy of baker milling machine company Hyde Park Massachusetts by breakage when hardening to make an economical serviceable cutter of large size it is customary to use a cast iron body with inserted tool steel teeth there are several different methods of inserting and holding these teeth usually when the inserted tooth is in the form of a blade they are held by taper pins or screws these blades are renewable the cast iron body being used many times another form of inserted tooth cutter consists of a round hardened steel pins driven into holes in a cast iron body this cutter is also permanent in form so as you can see in figure broken teeth cannot be replaced and when the teeth are worn almost down to the body the whole cutter is thrown away so next that is shell type in mill paste milling cutters under 6 inch and it has solid multiple tooth cutters with teeth on face and periphery it held on stub arbor okay it may be threaded or use key in shank to drive cutter next is this slot it is used to cut wide horizontal grooves at bottom of this slot after a narrow vertical grooves machined with end mill or side milling cutter okay that means after using end mill cutter these this slot can be performed consist of small side milling cutter with teeth on both sides and integral shank for mounting next is fly cutter it is single pointed cutting tool with cutting end group ground to desired shape it is mounted on special adapter or hardware and fine feed must be used it is used in experimental work instead of a special shaped cutter so these are the parts and the functions the teeth helix angle center cutting shank okay these are the parts and their functions are given over here now next we are going to see the dividing head sorry indexing so indexing is an operation by dividing the periphery of a piece of work into any number of equal parts accomplished by dividing her head or index head so here you can see the principle or mechanism of dividing head so here you can see the main spindle which drives the workpiece
main spindle as well. this index plate this hang holes with crank and pin index crank drives spindle through a worm gear worm gear has 40 tip for one rotation of workpiece we need to revolution of we need 40 revolutions of index crank so here index plate is there it is equi spaced holes around various circles normally it is of having the company brown and sharp company and it has three plates first plate is having 15 whole circles 16 17 18 19 20 whole circles and second plate is having 21 23 27 29 31 33 whole circles and third plate is having 37 39 41 43 to 47 49 whole circles in the third plate so here you can see the index plate number one which is having the 15 16 17 18 19 20 whole circles and further here it is you can see the index plate that you are seeing over here next that is universal dividing head it is used for all forms of indexing it is used for setting work in vertical horizontal or in inclined position relative to two table surface for turning workpiece periodically through a given angle to impact indexing movement and for imparting continuous rotary motion to workpiece for milling helical grooves so methods of indexing are simple indexing compound indexing differential indexing in simple indexing it is using any one of the indexing plate in conjunction with warm to find index cram movement the formula is 40 upon n n is nothing but number of divisions required so milling of gear with 20 teeth is there then n is equal to 20 then index crank moment is equal to 40 upon 20 so index crank moment is two whole number that means index crank is to be rotated through two complete turns and if the gear is with 30 teeth then index crank moment is 40 is equal to 40 upon 30 then it has to one complete turn of crank and additional one third of a turn for obtaining additional one third turn select plate okay so in such a way we can do the indexing and for compound indexing to separate movements to separate movement of index rank in different whole circles of one index plate to obtain crank movement not obtainable by simple indexing okay so here two movements one of index crank as in simple indexing second of index plate after locking with plunger so in this first that is crank pin is rotated through required number of spaces in one of the whole circles of index plate and crank pin is engaged and second moment removing rear lock pin and rotating plate together with index crank forward or backward through calculated number of spaces of another whole circle and then lock pin is engaged so there are some rules for compound indexing this is the formula 40 upon n is equal to n1 upon small n1 upon capital n1 plus and minus plus or minus small n2 upon capital n2 so in this n is nothing but and uh, capital n is number of divisions required capital n1 is whole circle used by crank pin capital n2 is whole circle used by lock pin small n1 is a whole spaces moved by crank pin in n1 whole circle n2 is whole spaces moved by crank pin in n2 whole circle okay now let us see one example index 69 divisions by compound indexing so we are going to put this 69 into the formula 
now resolve first into two factors the number of divisions required let us say 23 and 3 choose at random whole circles index circles say 23 and 33 subtract whole number of one circle from another and then factor the difference 2 into 5 place factor of divisions required and factor of difference above horizontal line and next factor the numbers of turns of crank required for one revolution of spindle and also factors of whole circles place these factors below the line so you will get such thing okay so now cancel common factors above and below the line so all factors you can see 23 23 3 3 2 2 so all factors above can be cancelled so whole circles 23 and 33 can be used so n1 is equal to 23 n2 is equal to 33 if factors above line cannot be cancelled completely then two other circles should be chosen for trial calculations okay factors which remain uncancelled below lines are multiplied to obtain spaces in whole circle to be moved by two indexing movement that is 44 is the number of whole spaces to be moved for indexing so index crank should be moved by 21 holes in 23 whole circles in forward direction and then the plate and the crank together by 11 holes in 33 whole circle in backward direction okay now next that is differential indexing it required division is if required division is obtained by combination of Two movements movement of index similar to simple indexing and simultaneous movement of index plate when crank is turned so here you can see lock pin is disengaged with index plate which is screwed to sleeve meter gear is fastened to other ends of sleeve index plate sleeve and meter are free to rotate on warm shaft meter gear meshes with another meter gear on shaft tail end of spindle a stir okay now change gear may be mounted between stud and shaft gear on spindle is driving gear and gear on shaft is shaft 16 is driven gear change gear then to maybe simple or compounding so here this differential indexing is not that much important that means the question is question will not be asked in the exam but still we have seen okay let us see the further so gear ratio this is the rule for differential indexing a minus n into 40 upon a in that a is selected number which can be indexed by plane indexing and number is approximately equal to n n is nothing but the required number of divisions to be indexed in gear ratio so calculated numerators of friction indicates driving gears on index head spindle and denominator indicates driven gears on index plates index crank movement is equal to 40 upon a index crank will have to be moved by an amount 40 upon a for n number of complete division of work and index crank should be moved in same direction or opposite to each other depending on type of gearing ratio and selected number chosen if 
A minus N is positive blade must rotate in same direction as crank and if A minus is negative the index blade must rotate in direction opposite to that of a crank. To achieve these conditions number of idlers used depends upon. Okay now let us see directly the example index 83 division. So first find out whether crank index crank can be indexed by plane indexing or not so formula is 40 upon n since there is no plate with 83 number of holes number so it cannot be indexed by plane indexing now assume a is equal to 80 let us take a 86 so 86 is near to 83 and can be indexed by plane indexing so gear ratio this is what we kept in the formula and we got this now let us see therefore the driver gears are 72 and 40 and driven gears are 24 and 86 and this is what the index crank moment 40 upon 86 which is equal to 20 upon 43 so for complete indexing index crank will be have to be moved by 20 holes in 43 whole circles as a minus n that is 86 minus 83 equal to 3 is positive and gearing ratio is compound so there is no requirement of a idler so next we are going to see the broaching So these are these are the basic principles of broaching. Uh, broaching. It is a machining process for removal of a layer of material of desired width and depth, usually in one stroke by a slender rod or bar type cutter, having a series of cutting edges with gradually increased the protrusion, as you can see in figure, which comes here. It is. In shaping, attaining full depth requires a number of strokers to remove the material in thin layers step by step by gradually infeeding the single point cutting tool. In figure B you can see. Whereas broaching enables remove the whole material in one stroke only by the gradually rising teeth of the cutter called a broach. The amount of tooth rise between the successive teeth of the brooch is equal to the feed given in shaping okay so here you can see in shaping we use so many cuts but in broaching just you are supposed to do one stroke and you will get the required depth so here you can see the next is the basic principle of broaching so this is vertical push it is inserted into the workpiece and this is the horizontal pull this is pulled to the left side to achieve this much required hole okay this is the geometry of brush tool here you can see the pitch shank length so the different types of brooches and their applications so broaching is getting more and more widely used wherever feasible for high productivity as well as product quality various types of brooches have been developed and are used for wide range of applications so brooches can be broadly classified in several aspects such as internal broaching or external broaching Push type or pull type, ordinary cut or progressive type, solid sectional or modular type, profile sharpened or form relieved type. So, here internal broaching tools and their applications, which includes internal creek, keyway, splines, non circular holes, internal slots. Here you can see. So these are the brooches are used to get such a shape.
okay this is what the internal door changes there now the let us see the next external broaching so external surface broaching completely competes with milling shaping and planing and wherever feasible this process outperforms in respect to productivity and product quality and this may be of both pull type and push type so main applications of the external broachings are surfacing flat peripheral contour surfaces grooves slots keyways etc on through the outer surface of object and also for external splines of having different forms and the teeth of external spur gears or gear sectors okay so let us see next the pull type and push type broaches pull type broach is subject to tensile force which maintains alignments and prevents buckling pull type broaches are made as long as single piece and these are widely used for internal broaching and push type broaching are shorter in length to avoid buckling and made in segment push broaches are used for external broaching preferably requiring light cuts and small depth of material removal so here ordinary cut and progressive type broach is there so here you can see the solid sectional and model type broach now these are the types of broaching machine according to purpose of use general purpose single purpose special purpose and according to nature of work internal broaching external broaching and according to configuration horizontal vertical according to number of slides or stations single station type multi station type indexing type and according to tool or work motion intermittent type and continuous type now next we are going to see the planer and boring machine so here you can see the planer this is the difference between shaper and planer planer types boring which we have seen okay so boring we know that it is the process of producing circular internal profiles on a hole made by drilling or another process it uses single point cutting tool called a boring bar in boring the boring bar can be rotated or the work part can be rotated machine tools which rotate the boring bar against a stationary workpieces are called boring machines also boring mills also borings can be accomplished on a turning machines with a stationary bar position in the store post and rotating workpiece held in the light chuck okay so this is what the cutting conditions in boring now that is the let us see the types of boring machine horizontal and vertical boring machine now next we are going to see the mcq so here we are going to see the mcq on the first unit so let us see one by one i will directly say the answer instead of seeing all the options i will tell only the correct answer in metal machining the zone where the heat is generated due to friction between the moving chip and the tool face is called a friction zone option a friction zone now second question in determining the various forces on the chip merchant assumed as that the here the option d is correct that means all of the three options sentence are correct 
ओके नाउ लेट अस सी द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन मशीनिंग मेटल्स सरफेस रफनेस इज ड्यू टू एंड द आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी ऑल थ्री सेंटेंस आर करेक्ट ओके सो क्वेश्चन थ्री डी ऑप्शन इज करेक्ट नाउ द क्वेश्चन फोर द टू लाइफ decreases as the cutting speed increases okay as cutting speed increases tool life decreases now next in the relation v t is to n e is equal to c the value of n for high speed tool varies from 0.25 to 0.40 so option is b disagree okay now negative rakes are used for all these that is for carbide tools heavy loads hard materials now option c which statement is correct about nose radius that both the statements are correct option a and option b okay so c option is correct for the question 7 now eighth question in order to achieve a specific surface finish in single point turning the most important factor to be cons to be controlled is option c feed now next the tool life is said to be over if if here the option d is correct that means all of the above okay so next question continuous chips with built up edge are formed during machining of ductile materials for question 10 option b is correct ductile material metals now next question the rate of removing metal is the rate of removing metal is increased by increasing the depth of cut okay as depth increases the Removing metal is also increases. Now twelfth, the tool life tool life is dependent on cutting speed. Okay. Now next, the factor sum of cutting velocity and chip velocity is equal to shear velocity. So option A is correct. Next question. in an orthogonal cutting the depth of cut is halved and the feed rate is doubled if the chip thickness ratio is affected or affected with the changed cutting condition the actual chip thickness will be doubled 15th question the spindle cutting energy used for establishing the machinability of the metal depends upon the all these three factors okay option d is correct which of the following parameters govern the value of shear angle in continuous chip formation so here also all of these option d is there for question number 16 17 the shear velocity is the velocity of here the knob this is there for question number 17 so for 18 in metal machining the zone where the minimum heat is generated due to the plastic deformation of metal is called as a shear zone a better machinable metal is one which gives lower chip tool contact area and larger shear angle okay so for question number 19 option a is correct now question number 20 the correct sequence okay so here the option c is correct cutting speed feed rate and depth of cut now next question that is the cutting fluid mostly used for machining steel is soluble oil okay the lip angle is is the angle between the tool face and the ground end surface of flank so next question small nose radius results in excessive stress concentration and greater heat generation as the next question as the cutting speed increases the cutting tool force forces decreases next question greater wear leads to 
here the option is there that means it leads to our three effects okay so 26 number question the relation between the two life in minutes and cut cutting speed in uh, meter per minute is depends upon the tool and work piece okay so the correct answer is option b vt raised to n equal to c the tool life is measured by the all these factors also for 27 number question option d is correct 28 greater wear is mainly due to the phenomena known as diffusion of metals plank wear depends upon the amount and distribution of hard constituents in the work material and next question the tool may fail due to the option is option d all of these now next the factor considered for evaluation of machinability is here again the option d is there all of these now next question in machining metal cutting forces force at the cutting edge is measured by okay that is tool dynamometer or dynamometer option b okay in american standard association system if the tool nomenclature is 86 8-6-5-5-10-15-2 mm then the side rack angle will be 6 okay option b is there now in oblique cutting of metals the cutting edge of the tool is here inclined at an angle less than 90 degree to the direction of tool travel now next question cutting fluids are used to the option is d all of this last question tool life in orthogonal cutting is less than the tool life in oblique cutting okay so here today we are going to stop over here thank you